Something you eat every day may be killing your nerves or interfering with your nerve recovery. What am I talking about? It's gluten. Now, you may think you're safe because you don't have celiac disease, but think again. Many people suffer from gluten sensitivity and never, never even know it. Gluten can cause both direct and indirect damage to your peripheral nervous system and your central nervous system, and it can also inhibit the nerve's ability to heal and recover. So in today's video, I'll cover the problem with modern wheat, what is gluten sensitivity, the dangers of gluten and nerve damage, and how to determine if you're sensitive to gluten, and also how to protect your nerves and reverse the damage. Don't go anywhere, it's gonna be good. Hey gang, Dr. C here. If you're ready to conquer your peripheral neuropathy, reclaim your life and start living again, then subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified as soon as we publish new content. All right, let's dive in. Wheat, an ancient food for over 10,000 years has become a toxic junk over the last 60 to 70 years. How is that possible? Well, in order to understand how this happened, first we have to understand that a large component of wheat is a protein called gluten. Gluten is a protein found in many grains and beer. It's responsible for the elasticity that you see in dough. It's in wheat and its derivatives like wheat berries, durum, semolina, spelt, and kamut, and also farro. You also find it in rye and barley, and triticale, which is actually a hybrid grain produced by cross in wheat and rye. It's in malt, like malted barley flour, malted milk or milkshakes, malt extract or syrup, and malt vinegar. It's even in brewer's yeast that uses wheat flour. Now, thousands of years ago, actually even hundreds of years ago, gluten-containing grains didn't cause numer numerous health issues that we're seeing today. And you might say that's simply because, you know, the connection wasn't made between the harmful effects that hadn't been recognized or linked to gluten. But the truth is, it has very little to do with that. In fact, this may surprise you. Often, an American who can't consume any gluten without any reaction can go to Europe and eat breads containing gluten with no problems at all. Sounds crazy, right? Well, here's the difference. In the U.S., the production of these grains has changed drastically. In the 1960s, the world wheat crop was transformed by a movement called the Green Revolution, which was part of the start of a genetically engineered wheat crop. A new species of wheat called the dwarf wheat, one of the first well-known genetically modified foods, was developed. Now, the purpose of this farming technology was to increase uh, crop resistance against pests, drought, and disease, resulting in increased crop yields. Now, these methods were so successful at doing just that, that they were soon overtaken by large companies for profit like DuPont and Monsanto. Unfortunately, there was little or no regard for the effects on nutrition and human health. Now, the reason why more and more people are developing gluten sensitivity to these new farming methods is because th these gluten-containing grains have significantly higher gluten content. In fact, dwarf wheat has up to 50% more gluten than heirloom wheat, the original unmodified grain. So you might be still wondering why most people don't experience the same reaction to gluten in some parts of Europe. It's because certain areas do not use genetically engineered grain. They only use heirloom grains. Now, these are plants that have been carefully grown from the exact same seed line for hundreds of years and passed down from generation to generation. They haven't been genetically modified or altered in any way. The following grains are heirloom grains, einkorn, emmer, and sorghum. Now, these grains contain at least 50% less gluten than dwarf wheat. What you may not realize is that gluten is hidden in so many foods. Now, the obvious one is bread, but have you ever reala realized that it's also in pasta, noodles, crackers, pastries, and croutons? And it doesn't stop there. You can also find gluten in soy sauce and any sauce or gravy that uses wheat flour as a thickening agent. Also, beer and malt beverage like Twisted Tea and Mike's Harder contain gluten. Dr. Fasano, director of the University of Maryland Center for Celiac Research, has found that gluten sensitivity affects 
far more people than celiac disease. He estimates approximately 20 million Americans suffer from gluten sensitivity, and most are unaware that the body doesn't tolerate gluten effects. I want you to know this number is considered to be very conservative. In fact, Dr. Ford, author of the book Gluten Syndrome, says he believes that the percentage of gluten sensitivity could be potentially as high as 50% of the world population. And many other medical researchers agree with this. Now, gluten sensitivity is estimated to affect at least one third of all Americans of all ages. So what is gluten sensitivity exactly? It's an autoimmune disorder that creates inflammation throughout the body. And it has wide ranging effects across many systems, including your brain, peripheral nerves, heart, joints, digestive tract, and more. Even a mild gluten sensitivity can cause serious inflammation, especially from chronic exposure to gluten. Now, this can result in tremendous damage to the neurons or nerve cells in your brain, spinal cord, your peripheral nerves, and it can increase nerve, joint, and muscle pain and symptoms. Now, here's what gluten sensitivity looks like. You can get gas and bloating, indigestion, stomach pain and cramps, diarrhea or constipation, nausea or vomiting, headaches or migraines, rashes or skin bumps, eczema-like symptoms, brain fog, fatigue, and even episodes of depression or anxiety, increased pain and symptoms, and also nasal congestion. So when you look at these symptoms, it's no wonder they're commonly overlooked because they can be commonly associated with so many things besides gluten. Now, let's take a look at the dangers of gluten and nerve damage. Numerous studies have discovered that even a mild gluten sensitivity with chronic exposure can result in the following forms of nerve damage. Motor nerve damage, also known as large fiber neuropathy. Sensory nerve damage, known as small fiber neuropathy. And autonomic nerve damage. Now, Gluten can cause substantial damage to the myelin sheath of the peripheral nerves, which is the outer protective coating of the nerve. Quite often, a person will suffer from a combination of damage to these areas, resulting in the most common form of peripheral neuropathy known as sensory motor neuropathy. Now, what's alarming is because many doctors are still unaware of gluten's link with nerve damage, and because the symptoms can be mistaken for other dis disorders, the peripheral neuropathy is often misdiagnosed as idiopathic neuropathy, meaning of unknown origin. Now, most of us have heard of the term leaky gut, but did you know you can also develop leaky brain? Now, inflammatory reactions like gluten sensitivity can disrupt the blood-brain barrier. Now, this barrier shields the brain from toxic substances in the blood and harmful components like pro-inflammatory compounds. It prevents their ability from getting into the brain. Well, new research has now found that people with gluten sensitivity can develop an increased permeability of the blood-brain barrier which can allow these harmful substances in the body to pass through to the brain and damage neurons. In fact, there are numerous research studies that have linked gluten sensitivity with central nervous system neurodegenerative diseases like ataxia and epilepsy. Neuronal damage from gluten can also mimic multiple sclerosis. Now, let's look at how to determine if you're gluten sensitive. Well, there's a few different ways you can test for this. The easiest and most cost-effective way is the elimination method. You'll need to eliminate all gluten for two weeks. So make sure you're not eating any of the following grains. Wheat, barley, rye, oats, spelt, kamut, and triticale. Also, don't forget hidden sources of gluten like soup mixes, salad dressings, sauces, and believe it or not, you can even find hidden gluten in lipstick certain vitamins, medications, and even Play-Doh for those of you with kids or grandkids who might have gluten sensitivity. Now, this test will only work if you eliminate all gluten from your diet, not a single crumb of bread and no hidden gluten. After two weeks of being gluten-free, you'll introduce gluten back into your diet and over the next two to three days, watch and see what happens. Do you develop any of the symptoms I mentioned earlier in this video? An alternate way to test for gluten is by having lab work done. Your blood can be tested for IgA anti-gliadin antibodies and 
IgG anti-gliadin antibodies. If you're trying to determine celiac disease, you you'd also want to run a tissue transglutaminase antibody test or a TTA. Now, many doctors consider uh, elevated anti-gliadin antibodies in the absence of a positive intestinal biopsy to be insignificant. However, in light of the new research on the dangers of gluten sensitivity without full-blown celiac, celiac disease, most functional doctors, including myself, consider any ele elevation of IgA or IgG antibodies to be very significant. And it would definitely be worthwhile to do a trial elimination of gluten and see how you feel. Now, the last topic I want to go over with you today is how to protect your nerves from gluten and how to reverse the nerve damage. Gluten sensitivity can create many nutritional deficiencies. The chronic inflammation sets the stage for vitamin and mineral loss along with malabsorption of nutrients. This is one of the biggest delays we see in peripheral neuropathy patients who are very slow to respond to our treatment. They may be taking the critical nutrients necessary for nerve repair, but their gut is unable to fully absorb them due to the chronic inflammation from the gluten. Now, gluten-sensitive individuals can often experience deficiencies in B vitamins like B1, folate, B12, or deficiencies in vitamin A, C, D, E, and K. We can also find mineral deficiencies such as iron, magnesium, selenium, zinc, and chromium. Now, when you consume gluten, it can take up to three days before it's cleared from your body. We call this the transit time. And of course, this depends on the load of gluten that you've eaten. This is what gluten transit time will look like for the average person. Gluten can spend up to four hours in the stomach. Then once it moves into the small intestine, it will spend six hours in the small intestine, followed by 59 hours in the colon. The more gluten you've eaten, the more this time increases. Here's how you can speed up the transit time through your body and out your colon. Start by eating more high fiber vegetables and drinking more water. The next thing you can do is take a supplement with specific enzymes that break down the gluten to reduce the inflammatory effect. Now, this is a good practice whether you're gluten sensitive or not. It's important to have sufficient HCL in your stomach to break down the gluten and stop inflammation. You also want an enzyme supplement to contain propyl endopeptidase, protease, and amylase. Now, to cover all your enzyme needs for regular digestion and gluten digestion, I recommend using this supplement as your base. The company is Pure Encapsulation, and the name of the supplement is Digestive Enzymes Ultra with Betaine HCL. What I like about this supplement is that it already has the HCL you need, where many other supplements don't. Now, we're not sponsored by any of these companies. I'm just sharing some of the products we use and that we prescribe for our patients. Now, for anyone who's gluten sensitive, this one product isn't enough. You'll also need to complex it with one of these two products, either Glutenese by Enzymetica or Gluten Dairy Digest by Pure Encapsulation. Either one of these will do a great job at breaking down the uh, gluten and decreasing inflammation caused by it. This is key if you're eating out and have no control over the gluten exposure. And there you have it, Neuphoria Tribe. The hidden ingredient that might be just impacting your nerves and hindering your journey to your recovery could be gluten. It's not just about celiac disease, it's about the countless people who are unaware of the gluten sensitivity. So as we wrap things up, if you've been following our videos for the past year and a half and you're implementing the things that we've been recommending and you're not seeing the results, then you may want to take a long, hard look at gluten. This could be the game changer you need to clear the hurdles you've been battling. Before we go, I have a small favor to ask. Please share this video with friends and family. It's our goal to empower people on their journey to recovery. No one has to accept living with this condition. Also, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us to continue producing valuable content for you. Oh, and don't forget to click on the bell so you're notified as soon as we release new content. It's our mission to create a neuropathy-free tribe globally. And we thank all of you for helping us do that. Until next time, my friends, take care. Stay gluten aware, and I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. Continue producing valuable content.
<laughs> Let's do that again. To the chronic inflammation. Hmm. Well, to get notified as soon as we publish new content. Content. <laughs>